in our anecdotal sample, I will say there is a strong but not absolute bias towards people who are at least somewhat vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccines. That's true. We have seen some people who are not vaccinated, but the number of people who have been hit with substantial disease who are vaccinated is conspicuous. Yeah. Um, which, you know, raises questions, which I guess we'll get to later in the podcast uh, about um, efficacy of the vaccines um, and also possible downsides, right? Which right. were never properly accounted for in the fairy tale that we were given about how these things were supposed to function. The risk that right. they would be counterproductive was never described. It wasn't. And maybe maybe that's a good, a good place to segue here. But uh, one thing that is always worth saying is that specifically the mRNA vaccines, but I guess also the adenovirus vectored vaccines, um, the effects of them on the body are likely to be very similar to the effects of, of the virus itself. Because of course, uh, you know, to the degree that the disease that COVID as produced by SARS-CoV-2 uh, is largely about the spike protein, what the mRNA vaccines are doing is having getting your body to produce the spike protein over and over and over and over again. So it can be hard to tell the difference. And is there a chance that having been exposed to the spike uh, via a vaccine upon being exposed to the actual complete virus, you are more likely to have a response at this point? Of course, it's possible. Um, I want to add two things here, a couple, a couple things. One is I think the better way to do this is not to say that the two things are very similar. It's to say that there is a subset of the effects of the virus and the, the vaccines. Mm -hmm. There is a subset of the effects of these things that overlaps. Yes. That is that which is, there turns out spike protein is a problem in and of itself. Right. To the extent that both uh, the virus and the vaccines produce spike protein, there will be an overlap in whatever uh, whatever counterproductive yeah. physiology follows from that. Then there are a lot of things that are not overlapping, mm -hmm. right? For example, you would expect that which is caused by lipid nanoparticles to accompany the mRNA vaccines, but not COVID or the DNA-based adenovectored vaccines, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of subsets, you know, some big Venn diagram of, yep. of stuff. But the other thing, and I must tell you, I found Jonathan Cooey's uh, recent podcast um, uh, with, uh, I'm stumbling to find his Twitter handle. Anyway, I'll, I'll come back to it in a second. But uh, uh, Jonathan Cooey's recent podcast explored at a level of technical detail that was very hard to follow. I think even, even he had trouble following elements of it, um, but explored some of the massive differences between the likely differences that are downstream of the way these vaccines induce the production of spike mm. that suggests that what is circulating in vaccinated people is not entirely spike protein based on the um, the, uh, the, the instructions the viral from the mRNA model, mm -hmm. right? That basically, essentially, the pseudouridines that were introduced. So pseudouridine is something that does occur naturally. Nature uses this mechanism, but it uses it very, very sparingly. And we have almost no understanding of what it does and why it shows up where it is. The manufacturers that basically turned your cells into a, a, a vaccine factory used it universally. They replaced all the uracils, right? And what I learned from this podcast that I did not know is that the ribosomes are not indifferent to it, that actually this and that neither the ribosomes nor the tRNAs deal with this as a uracil. What happens is effectively an unpredictable phenomenon where there are lots of errors introduced every time because the ribosome is built around uh, hitting a uracil and, and uh, reading the information this way, a pseudouridine has a very different effect. And so... so uh, I have not seen this podcast with, with uh, JJ Cooey, uh, but it sounds like in your Venn diagram of the ways that uh, the vaccines could cause health problems and the ways that COVID cause health problems, there's this Venn diagram, as you said, and the spike protein effects. The effects from the spike protein are not entirely overlapping in part because there's additional spike protein with pseudouridine, uh, spike protein pro 
created by pseudouridine mRNA effects that will not be found in the original COVID, which is itself, of course, a Franken virus. But we've now got like a Franken a Franken vaccine for a Franken virus, and uh, therefore not even the spike protein is exactly the same. Right, and what's more, again, this is not my area of expertise, but. Mm-hmm. Um, our vaccinologist friends and others with more uh, of a molecular focus will correct me if I'm wrong here, but this also makes an argument in favor of the DNA-based vaccines because yeah. the DNA vaccines will not have pseudouridine in the RNA that results in the encoding of the spike protein. That's right. Um, yeah. So anyway. Be- because there's no uracil in DNA. Uh, right. So the point is, uh, at the point you get to RNA, it's a normal RNA because the mechanism is different. So if I've got that wrong, somebody will tell me, but um, mm-hmm. certainly seems can't see how it would be wrong. 